Welcome back everybody. We've got another beautiful Ford in here. It is a nice looking truck, but beautiful eh, on the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts. Remember that always. People and cars. All right, so I've got a noise and I diagnosed it. I'm pretty sure that it's cam phasers, but let's start here. Let me get my, my nerdy glasses off. Um, but the uh, it rattles pretty good, and it's not an idle. It's not a startup rattle. It's really just a, a, a kind of a no load or low load condition. That was a bad enough knock at first, I thought, oh no, that sounds really bad. But when you put it in gear, it doesn't do it. The only time it does it when it's in gear is when you're cruising and you back way off the throttle and it kind of gets no load on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tear this thing down. Um, it's kind of a, you don't see a lot of these trucks, but it's a 3.7, so a Duratec engine. Well, I missed getting any footage of taking this thing apart but it is apart so i get some footage of putting it back together Found is this phaser on this cam right here when i barred it over it would kind of the gear would move then the cam would kind of jerky move with with it so that's usually a sign that that phaser is failing and when it would do that oil would squirt out of this phaser controller right here this phaser solenoid so i'm thinking that was my not go for all of it uh we're doing phasers chains guides tensioners and then this piece here on the front wheel drive stuff that's the actual water pump on the rear wheel drive it's just a passage and it has an idler gear for the chain because the chain goes up and around and down here and back up so here we go At this point, we got to put phasers and everything together, and this is kind of a pain, but this is the L right here lined up with that link. This link is the same, it's just a dot. And then on the other side, for R, like this link again, same, R right there, see if you can see it. So what I do is when I mark my gears, I just always get a paint marker, even though everything's marked, it's easier to see, especially for an old guy. And then I draw a line on the other side too, and on the other side of the chain. So once it's together, you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, it's out of time now. Oh no, it's never gonna work. All right, enough of that. Okay, crank gear right here. We've got that on there and slide it on and that's all there is to that. That uh, water pass through with the idler is on there. Now we're going to put the primary guides on because the phasers cover those. you got to get those on. We've already got the secondary tensioners and guides on there. Guide, tensioner. You pop that little clip out of there and then you compress the tensioner and let it go and it will spring into action. There we go.
Okay, I do believe I did some good there. So if you can see in there, let me get a light for you. That mark is lined up, and then walk this chain off of here. That one, kind of hard to see. Oh, come on. You can see that mark. You can see where the chain is marked as well. That one looks good. And then, that one looks good. So we're all in time on the secondary stuff. Now we gotta go for the primary. So that will be where that mark, that mark, and that mark down there have corresponding links on the chain. Okay, let's go through our timing marks. Right side cam, you can see the dot under the mark. Left side cam, you can see the dot under the mark, we're good. And this link, I was fighting on finding it because a colorblind guy is looking for the black link and it's gold on that side. Now, let's go under here and if we can get that should have two marks in the middle of the two marks should line up with the link there so I think we're all good got everything together chain looks good once that's all good and you got your bolts tight you just take that and pop there it is now we got tension on it and we're all locked in
Now we're on to timing cover. It's all cleaned up. On the three fives and three sevens, there's a seal right here that feeds the water outlet. And you got the front seal, that's replaced. I'm gonna put a little lube on them, put some uh, silicone on all the places that it seals up. Don't forget right here and right there where those stands go through and then all along here. And don't get crazy. All you'll do is make a mess. Well, after all that fighting with time and chains and everything, I still had a rattle. That's no fun, but it happens. I wouldn't say I misdiagnosed it. We got 200,000 miles on it and I could play with it with my scanner and make the rattle change by changing the phaser position. So one of those things you kind of look at it and say, all right, that's kind of your telltale. But here, let me show you what I did find. Right there, number one rod bearing. All tore up. There's number two, not so bad. I went to the back, I've got six and five. And they're pretty nasty. I mean, they've got big chunks missing out of them. Oil's clean, so the filter's doing its job and cleaning everything out. I got number three and four to do, and then we'll throw it together. Here, take a look. And yeah, it's just a 3.7, but still, the cost of vehicles today, why wouldn't you? And just so nobody throws any stones, because I misdiagnosed this one, Yes, it needed the cam phasers. Yes, we had a couple of them that were just spitting oil when you try to bar it over, and the cam would walk around. It wouldn't hold in position, so they're wore out, 200,000 miles. But I'm not charging them to put rod bearings in this thing, so uh, I'll eat that cost. I take care of my people, take care of my customers, so I'll do the best, and we'll go from there. We'll get this one together tonight. Rock and roll. Now maybe later this week I can get onto some of my projects. We'll see. Rod bearings are back in. Got the windage tray that's part of the main bearing caps on. And I gotta get that mess out of there. It's obvious it did it. I'm wondering after looking at this if an oil change place may have ran it with no oil and then caught their mistake before they gave it to the customer. We'll see. I'm gonna look at the sticker. I know it had a fairly new one on there. All right, rod bearings are in. Let's see how she does here. See what kind of oil pressure we got. Such a wonderful noise. right there at that 2,000 rpm point after about 30 seconds of sitting there you start hearing a tappy tap noise I don't hear it let's go for a drive so far so good yeah it's got way better oil pressure it would sit right about halfway and now we're climbing almost to three quarters so I think this is a success yep 
check and check.